Okay, so comprehensive lifestyle changes significantly increase telomerase activity and consequently telomerase maintenance capacity in human immune system cells. Lancet, our own famous medical journal, has published this uh, late last year. And telomerase activity is really the maintenance people of genetic expression. Telomerase, we have, they're born with a certain length. And when that little telomerase rod is about that big, cell function drops, <laughs> cells die, ultimately death results. We used to think that this was pre-programmed. If it was programmed for 80 years, that's as long as it would go. Six years, that's as long as it would go. Now we know that through what we do in life, we can speed up the degeneration of it, or we can slow it down. We can't stop it. We cannot stop it. So it is incredible how in laboratories we've been able to extend telomerase life by 40%. Does that translate to human life? Don't know. It's not about life extension though, it's about extending functional life. And that's what we're going to be talking about here. Uh, is uh, because there's too many people who maybe died at 70, but on a tombstone it should have said died at age 30, because the last 40 years of life was spent in disability, bad moods, chronic inflammation, and really not a true, true functional life. Now, I, I know I'm being a little extreme here, but you get where I'm coming at. I mean, what we're talking about is functional life. Significant lifestyle changes significantly increases telomerase activity. This is a very important study that has come out. It basically says that we do have control over some of the issues that affect us as far as our health goes. Sorry, I'm still here, didn't I? I walked away. You want me to go with, go with this one? Yep. Okay. This is a new one that original research was done in France. And this is metallum uh, metoproteinase 13, MMP13 for short, obviously. And this is one of the things that extends life's activity. This is a fascinating one because MMP13 is uh, almost like a, an enzyme, a digestive enzyme like activity that supports cartilage, ligaments, tendons, and soft tissue. And we used to think that once you stretch the ligament, degenerated your cartilage, say in your knee, that was it. There's not much we could do about it. We had some fascinating studies come from about 25 years ago coming out of Italy that showed that glucosamine sulfate, a natural product, could bring back some cartilage function, but it really does it by bringing water into the cartilage, smoothing out the rough edges, and really making the joint more fluid, uh, more lubricated. Glucosamine sulfate we've utilized here for two decades with incredible results. Um, but we can never quite fix ligaments and tendons and totally restore cartilage. We can now by activating this MMP13. Uh, it's called tissue flex here. It's very new. Uh, it's, it's very late breaking. And wow, what a difference it makes for some very interesting things, including, as you can see, inflammatory bowel disease. It's a soft tissue. It's a soft tissue. Periodontitis. It's another soft tissue. I have seen patients that have been totally debilitated by severe car wrecks with multiple metal plates all over the body. One of my patients I'm talking about right now. On high dose of Vicodin for nine months, not responding to any therapy, comes hobbling in. I put her on tissue flex, fish oil, and that's it. And you know, in two days, she's out fighting it. Two days. That's the power of the human body. We're not blocking anything. We're promoting good things here. Difference between a nutrient and a drug. We are not blocking something. We're just activating MMP13. It is absolutely phenomenal how frozen shoulders come back with it. I am so excited about this, and I'm just going, I wish I'd had this for all these, all these years, but we have it now. So that is uh, a very new finding, and we're finding more and more different uses for it. I, uh, I'm going out on a limb here, um, but I think that it may also have the ability to fight cancer. If you study the mechanism of it, and maybe a year, maybe two years from now, I will be able to stand in front of you and say, we've got something that uh, really effectively goes after breast cancer, uh, and it'll be a substance that's very close to this. I know there's ongoing research on in the topic, and it makes total sense. 
but I'm, that's way ahead of, of, of where, where we're at right now. Uh, we know this is what it can do, and uh, wow, what a weapon. But you know, you don't want to be a green pharmacist. A green pharmacist is not changing the way we think. It's the same old medical model. Instead of Tylenol or Vicodin, use this. So you're trading one thing for another. No side effects? Sure. More effective? <laughs> Wonderful. But still, you still have to go, what happened in the first place? Why is this patient experiencing what they're doing? Otherwise, it's going to have another effect somewhere else. Does that make sense? Remember, everything is very interconnected. Remember that the MMP13 was originally developed for chiropractors who were having patients that after they adjusted them and, and they went through their, their normal protocols of, of stretching, exercise, diet, that they just weren't getting better and they had to keep coming in more often than what was recommended. And they had come about that, you know, they would give them the tissue flex an hour before they would get adjusted and they find that their adjustment would hold longer and their body would heal. So it comes slow. Yeah, and it would help them get past that next plateau. So yep. then you can reach to the higher level of health and keep moving forward instead of struggling and being in the background. Yeah. And it really is, if, if you study uh, European research, it really comes from the extracellular matrix. Uh, the extracellular matrix is all the soft tissues, ligaments, tendons that bind us together. It goes around our organs, goes into our legs, around our knees. It just is one big structure that holds us together along with our skeleton. And it used to be interesting, we had nice names for it all. But research in the last decade has shown that it is an incredible conduit for information. Who would have thought? It's an incredible conduit for information. In fact, it might be just as important as the nervous system. Things, information is zipping back and forth at speeds that we can't understand, faster than neurological impulses. And now we're figuring out that physical therapy, the chiropractic adjustment, acupuncture, soft tissue massage, such as rolfing, all work by affecting this extracellular matrix, somehow making it send a signal into the body, having somehow a systemic effect. This is how acupuncture works. Research is really active in it right now, but it makes sense because when you adjust someone, you're stretching a certain part of the extracellular matrix, sending a signal to the nerve, the nerve then goes through business, and yes, that's why when we're adjusting somebody for menstrual cramps, while they're on the table, the menstrual cramps are gone. Yeah? This is why if somebody comes in with a headache, you can adjust to ah, much better, it's gone. And we hear it so often, it's almost, well, we expect that, well, yeah, hello, but to the patient who experiences it for the first place, for, for the first time, it's phenomenal. Yeah? It's the extracellular matrix. Very ongoing. In Europe, we call this the ground substance. Uh, it's, uh, and, and tissue flex is the first of, uh, of this whole new way of thinking about the human body uh, to come into, uh, uh, come into being. Sure. Yeah. This is revolutionary. Um, yeah, this talks that yeah. what we're going into next is still recovering some kinases, and the MMP13 is one of the kinases, and they're just starting to do some wonderful research about osteoporosis. Finally, ladies have an option to see why, what's going on with our bones, why are we losing bones. So this is what's been going on. They're looking at the mechanism of disease, is osteoporosis actually like an obesity of bone? Are we replacing bone cells with fat? So is it getting fatty and mushy? So one of the reasons that they're stating that we're losing bone and we're getting fatty bone is due to some of the serotonin effects, our hormone effects. Why do women lose the most bone as they go into osteoporosis up to a couple years before osteoporosis, or no, sorry, menopause, and then up to five years into menopause? And it's because of our, our downtrodden, they thought of the estrogen, but they never looked at what else was going on. What's the vitamin D connection in here? And they're seeing that vitamin D now can be your modulator for how much calcium you get.